Ascension Island is located 1,000 miles from Africa and 1,400 miles from Brazil at 7 degrees south, 14 degrees west. Ascension was originally discovered in 1501 by Portuguese explorers. Voyagers continued to use the island as a source of fresh seabird and sea turtle meat. It remained uninhabited until 1815 when the British claimed it and established a military presence to keep the French away when Napoleon was exiled on St. Helena Island, 800 miles to the southeast. Perhaps most notably, Ascension is host to the second largest green turtle nesting population in the Atlantic. These turtles forage off the coast of Brazil for six months before making the long migration to Ascension Island to mate and nest. The 2014 Duke University Sea Turtle Biology and Conservation class was the first of its kind. For 10 days, we worked alongside conservation staff to learn about the current challenges and future of conservation on Ascension Island. As part of my first postdoc, um, Annette and I, and that's Annette Project, and I came as a job sharing couple, both of us as postdocs, straight out of our PhDs, to run a project which was funded by the British government to set up turtle conservation and monitoring on the island. So at that point in time there was no um, conservation department and um, it was uh, it was very interesting time because people wanted to get become involved and we ended up with 40 or 50 people involved in the turtle research. My name is Emily Cunningham and I'm the Marine Turtle Programme Coordinator for this season along with Daniel Moore. We have two interns as well called Maria and Maddie. Um, myself and Daniel both went to Bangor University and did marine biology. After that I went and worked with the UK Government Environment Agency and did environmental management. Then I found myself in Sri Lanka with marine turtles and that's led me to work here. Our job here is mostly monitoring, so we monitor the beaches, we count tracks and the nests and from that we can determine the nesting success on the beach on any given night. We have three study sites, that's Long Beach, Pan Am Beach and North East Bay and we're looking at how the nesting success varies between those beaches. We check every morning for strandings because turtles aren't the most intelligent of animals and sometimes need a little helping hand getting back to the sea. We do a lot of night work where we're putting in loggers to measure the temperature of the nest over the incubation period as well. We're putting them in on all three nesting beaches, main nesting beaches, to see how it varies between those beaches as well. We help the conservation office conduct research on nest incubation temperatures by placing data loggers into the middle of the nest while the turtle laid her eggs. Multiple loggers were placed on each beach to understand how temperature varies among the beaches. This research has important implications for how climate change might affect sea turtle sex ratio since sex is determined by temperature during incubation. Warmer sand temperatures tend to yield more females whereas cooler sand temperatures yield more males. Once they finish laying, each turtle covers up their nests before going back to the water. On Ascension Island, it took around an hour for a female to dig, lay, and cover up her nest successfully. In other parts of the world, sea turtles are not afforded such a high levels of protection that allow them to nest virtually undisturbed. So when we worked in Sri Lanka, myself, Daniel, and Maddie as well, we had a lot of different issues with turtles there. In Sri Lanka, there's five species of turtles that nest on the beaches all around the island. But Sri Lanka is a developing nation and it's had a lot of issues in the past 20-30 years to do with civil war, so conservation has been suppressed somewhat compared to here. So as you guys know, in Ascension there was huge levels of exploitation, but that stopped and now um, 
green turtles are afforded a really high level of protection in the island, so there is zero take, direct take or, um, of eggs, whereas in Sri Lanka on some beaches we are still looking at about 100% take of nested females and of eggs. In terms of, of how sea turtle conservation varies, Ascension is utopia and Sri Lanka has got quite a long way to go. Occasionally, the conservation staff conduct excavations of sea turtle nests that hatched two to four days prior. The purpose of these excavations is to collect data on clutch size and hatchling success. We recorded the number of hatched eggs, undeveloped egg yolks, and unhatched eggs with partial embryos, as well as measured the nest depth and location. Sometimes during excavations, staff are surprised to find live hatchlings trapped underneath eggshells in the nest. During this excavation, we found 40 live hatchlings in one nest and 12 in another. Because it was daylight, we kept every hatchling back and placed them in a bucket for a nighttime release. The reasoning behind waiting is to avoid the hatchlings being easily predated by frigate birds or large tuna or sharks waiting in the water. Had we released them in the morning, they almost certainly would not have survived. Up against overwhelming odds, waiting until dark will increase their chance of survival. So Ascension Island is probably the second largest green turtle nesting colony in the Atlantic after Tortuguero in Costa Rica and it was subject to very intense exploitation through the 19th century and the population likely declined to a fraction of what it was. Um, the exploitation declined from the 1930s and through the 1940s and ceased in the 1950s and no turtles have been harvested since the 1950s. So, the population was probably at a very low level by the 1940s and 50s, but they were protected at that point. It probably started to recover then, but in the 1980s, Projeto Tamar, which is a pan-national turtle conservation program in Brazil, where all the turtles live, started, and lots of conservation activities happened there. The harvest, large industrial harvests were stopped, and so turtles were protected on the nesting ground and in the foraging grounds, and it appears the population is rising very fast. Ascension Island is globally important for biodiversity. It has a small population, yet the government here is, is putting significant resources, multiple staff members and vehicles into conservation. But undoubtedly, because it's of global importance, it's important that the UK government and international conservation organisations continue to support these, this small band of very dedicated people because we're dealing with something of global importance. But things are getting better and great leaps have been made over the last decade to 15 years and it's quite exciting looking forward as to what the future of biodiversity is on Ascension Island. The reason I call Ascension Cita a utopia is because the threats are basically zero to turtles whilst they're on the island during nesting. There is no direct threat, the only threat is to themselves when they don't find their own way back to sea. Only about 30% of the energy transferred from the egg to the ecosystem actually comes in the form of a successful hatchling. Another 30% remains in the form of undeveloped eggs and the eggshells tossed back into the pit after excavation. These eggs or shells eventually decompose and deliver vital nutrients back into the sand. Another 30% is energy transferred to predators. While this course focused on turtles, we quickly came to realize how important conservation is to all of the species and ecosystems on Ascension Island. This once-in-a-lifetime opportunity made us appreciate the role such a small island can have in global biodiversity, and we're excited to learn about future efforts and research on Ascension Island.